Hello and good day. Again, my name is Dustin Drews with Forces of Flight. Today we're going to be covering the intro flight, what you can expect of it, what it is, and why you should take one and what you should get out of it. So the intro flight, what is it? What can you expect? Well, an intro flight is nothing more than your introductory flight into aviation with a particular school. Most all schools put these on, and the reason they do it, it's just a it's a discounted, most of the time it's discounted way, just to see if aviation's for you or not. Yeah, what to expect? Well, for starters, you'll have to schedule it. Most schools just don't let you walk in and do one. So call in advance and get one scheduled with the time that works for you in the school. You'll show up and generally you'll get a tour right off the bat. <clears throat> During a tour, expect to, uh, expect to see the birds you're gonna be flying, expect to see the maintenance area, or if they have it. Um, expect to see the simulator or anything they got there. Once you're done with your tour, they'll answer any of your questions and then you'll go on to uh, to uh, the bird. You'll have to probably sign a waiver before you fly. Anyways, you'll get do all that, you'll go out to the bird, and you'll do a pre-flight with the instructor. He'll walk you through what they're covering, what he's looking for, and then you'll get in the bird and uh, take off and he'll He'll do all the flying and then he'll get you up in the air so you can run the controls. But don't let him run the show. Make sure that you uh, you have a list of stuff that you want covered. Um, and the reason I say this, I want you to get the most bang for your buck out of the intro flight. And if you have any hesitations about any part of the flying that you've heard about or makes you nervous, have them demonstrate it for you. So you know right off the bat whether flying is for you. For instance, talking on the radio. That intimidates a lot of people. I still goof it up all the time. Have him or her, whoever the instructor is, let you talk on the radio just so you can see you just have a conversation with somebody else. It's nothing to be afraid of. If stalls have you nervous, you know what? Have them perform a stall. They are not scary whatsoever, especially if you're talked through one. So just <clears throat> make sure you have all your questions written down that, that make you nervous about aviation so you can get them covered. And if he don't let you fly, make sure he lets you run the controls and manipulate them. Most instructors are pretty excited for people getting into aviation, so they'll be more than willing to uh, to let you run the controls. I also say the intro flight is a interview, and the reason it's an interview it's it's not for they're interviewing you as a student, which they are, but most most schools will take anybody. You're interviewing them. Just make sure they're professional. Make sure the birds that they're using are birds you want to fly. I mean, it makes no sense. Go into a school that uses Cessna 152s that have a high wing, and if you want to fly a Piper that has a low wing. So get in the birds and make sure the school has the birds that you want to fly. Make sure if you want to transition into a multi-engine program that the school offers that. If you just want to stay a single engine, that's fine too, but just make sure whatever the school has or whatever you're looking at for a school, you can graduate beyond so you can reach your aviation goals. <clears throat> It's also a confidence builder. I mean, if you go in there prepared and have a list of stuff that you need or want covered, you'll know when you land that whether aviation's for you or not. And lastly, it's a whole lot of fun. I, I never took an intro flight myself. I just showed up to school and said, let's fly. But I did a lot of flying with my last job, doing wildlife surveys and that stuff. So I was pretty much prepared and knew what to expect to do it. So. That's what the intro flight is and should be. Make sure you do your questions, have a list of questions, and uh, do your research. Watch a couple of them on YouTube that are filmed, and definitely get a good grasp of what you can expect. What you should bring to the intro flight. Well, for starters, you're going to need water, uh, just in case you get thirsty. A bag of snacks, uh, pretzels, peanuts, something dry that you can kind of munch on. That definitely helps with the motion sickness. Small airplanes are a lot lot different than the big jumbo jets and stuff that you fly. You get bounced around a lot, but you'll get used to it after a flight or two. Sunglasses are almost a must. Keep the sun out of your eyes. I strongly encourage closed-toed shoes. Um, you'll be walking around, kneeling around, getting in and out of the airplane, and, and open-toed shoes could definitely damage your toes. Like I talked about earlier, uh, a list of things that you want covered, and I cannot stress this enough, make sure you have all your questions answered that that you have or any 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 shadow of doubt or anything that you, you want covered, make sure you get it covered on your intro flight. If not, you'll be kicking yourself once you 
pay for a few lessons and, and you find out something that you didn't want to know and you might have to jump schools. That would be very frustrating. And lastly, bring a six sack. Uh, most people don't get sick on small aircraft, I'll be honest. But if it's really hot and kind of turbulent, sometimes it, it gets the best of people. I know there's a student that I fly with from time to time. We did seven or eight flights, and then on the eighth one, something he ate or something he didn't eat, he got sick and had to use one. So just bring a six sack just to be prepared. Nobody likes to use their hat for that. Your takeaway from the intro flight. Did you get all your questions answered? I keep on hands harping on that, but you got to make sure that you got all your questions answered when it comes to this this flight. Is this the right type of bird that you want to fly? You know what? Every school puts on intro flights. So if you don't like the 172 high wing or 152 high wing, go take a flight in a Piper low wing just to see if that's a better bird for you. Make sure that this is the bird that you want to fly because you're going to be spending at least 40 to 50 hours in it. Is the school and the instructor worthy of your time and money? And when I say this, if you get a bad vibe from the instructor of the school, that's only going to compound as your training progresses. So make sure you got a good feeling, a good grasp, and a good expectation of what you're going to get out of this school. Um, we'll cover more instru on instructors further on, but make sure you start off on the right foot with the school and the instructor to make sure that they're, they're worthy of your time and your money. And lastly, is flying for you. Once you touch down, you taxi back, you should be able to tell yourself, yes, this is for me, or uh, I don't know, I don't think it is for me. Don't be afraid to say, yes, it is, or no, it isn't. You're going to have to put a lot of time in, a lot of money in, and a lot of effort to learn all this stuff. So if you have any doubt that flying is not for you, it's probably not. But if you, if you know flying is for you, you'll be excited and ready for the challenge. So that's all you can really expect for the intro flight. I'm sure there's more to it that I might have looked over, but I definitely write a list of stuff, know what you expect on the intro flight, and then uh, enjoy it because they're a lot of fun.